Cambodia's freshwater supplies are plentiful. The Mekong River dominates the landscape, and Lake Tonle Sap is an inland sea, a vast freshwater reservoir. The Cambodian lifestyle is entirely adapted to this geography. But today, over 60% of the population has no access to safe drinking water, a major public health problem. Cholera, dysentery, typhoid, hepatitis, worms, diarrhea, all are waterborne diseases. The consequences are nothing short of disastrous. The infant mortality rate in Cambodia is among the highest in Asia. Diseases spread by polluted water are the major cause. Jack Sim has found a novel solution to overcome this predicament. His fight for better public health is an unusual crusade against a widespread taboo, the toilet. My name is Jack Sim. I'm the founder of the World Toilet Organization. We are a global network of toilet activists around the world, and we break the taboo on toilets and try to improve quality of life on this subject. Jack Sim is the founder of World Toilet Organization, a non-profit organization based in Singapore. His vision, that everyone in the world eventually have access to a safe and affordable toilet. He travels the world to convince citizens groups, government agencies, and budgetary committees to meet and act urgently. Thanks to him, the UN has formalized November 19th as World Toilet Day. Everything happens by accident, really. This is not a, a planned journey of the life. When I read the newspaper one morning, where the Prime Minister of Singapore was saying that we should measure our graciousness according to the cleanliness of our public toilet. So I thought, nobody will do this subject, so why don't I start a restroom association? So this one is done like that. Urine go to the front, feces, feces come behind, and then anal washing. So one step back and anal washing. Founded in 2001 with 15 members, it now has 203 member organizations in 56 countries. Jack Sim actively works in the field with his many partners. So this is your one of these partners, LinkAid, a non-governmental organization, has developed two major projects to improve Cambodian sanitary conditions. This organization is based on the shores of Lake Tonle Sap. I don't know about the definition of social entrepreneur in a strict sense because what I do is to create a global platform for conversation and to connect people to solutions, to find the best practices, and don't need to reinvent the wheel so that everyone can scale up and share this information. In a community like the floating village of Chnok Tru, to understand the cycle of water is to understand the close relationship the people have with their environment. They are completely surrounded by water. It's their way of life. They use it for drinking, cooking, washing, laundry, fishing, but sadly, they also use it as their sewer and cesspit. In Chinook Tru, on the banks of Lake Tonle Sap, water is the source of life. But because people do not actively preserve this resource, it has also become a source of disease and death. There are um, 14 communities here that are entirely along the river. Uh, there are contamination of the water through their debris and their feces. The people here, do they understand uh, that they need to have a uh, proper toilet and sanitation. So is it because they, there is no supply, that they cannot buy it in the shop, or that they are not trained, or because they have 
no money. What is the level of uh, awareness so far? Đang cam kết việc xa cho tập tiếng Anh. Ta tiếng chấm lại đang là bảo quản không đấy. Hay rùm tiếng thập này thập gà. Hay mua chấm này tiết cô mình toàn miên ở này nào muốn chấm ở rầm ở si chấm rưỡi. Ta đôi từ lừa ca nghe được quản là tha hay mà thưa bằng hai. Ở chợ đây này là. Today still, more than a million children die each year from diseases related to contaminated water. Although it is the source of life, water also carries many diseases. The careless use of natural water reserves as sewers and cesspits is partly responsible for this situation. Jack Sim fully understands that whether in Cambodia or elsewhere in the world, Better public health is dependent on free and easy access to clean, efficient, and environmentally friendly sanitation facilities. But in order to implement toilets around the world and convince people to use them, attitudes must change. The available resources are plentiful, but the taboos are deeply rooted. You know, the dean of the Keio University told us once that in the university, he could not find any faculty that is not related to toilets. So at first we were trying to think, okay, which one? So health related, architecture related, manufacturing related, uh, design, law, and eventually we agree with him. Yes, it's true. There's nothing that is not related to the toilet because everything in the world is related to the human being. And the toilet is so intimate part of human survival. I guess this is the last item that people still haven't broke the taboo. Since Jack Sim founded the World Toilet Organization, a change in attitude has slowly been taking place. More and more people from all backgrounds are joining his initiative. We have mountain climber climbing for fundraising for World Toilet Organization, marathon runners, all kind of people are coming in. And, and I think once we popularize the subject until it's ubiquitous, we will have a very good quality of life every day, enjoyable visits to the toilet six to eight times a day. Uh, we spend three entire years of our life inside the toilet. So it has to be good. This is sand with uh, this. And after you poop, you put some and you cover over the poop, right? Cover it like cat sanitation. Yeah. I would see that in 10, 15 years, largely this problem will be transformed to positive and only a small population of the world will still have uh, no access to proper sanitation. I think the momentum is now very, very fast. 